Vikings, mindless warriors who pillaged, invaded, and burnt down entire cities. Except, this is not the entire story. Vikings weren't mindless brutes destroying everything in their wake. They reigned for 300 years for a reason. They cared for each other, and had ideas about life and philosophy that we could probably learn something from, even today. But what was it like being a Viking? For that, we have to go deeper into the mind of a warrior. The Norse Pagans most vikings, held a belief in a group of gods and goddesses, each associated with distinct aspects of nature and human experiences. You've probably heard about some of the most popular gods, Odin, Thor, Freya, and Loki. They believed these gods and goddesses could do evil or show mercy, and could influence their lives in various ways. Norse pagans believe that everything in the natural world is connected and that a divine essence exists in all things. This belief is reflected in the Norse concept of word. The idea of fate or destiny is woven throughout the universe. This is highlighted in their scripture, which are called Poetic Edda. In these stories we get a better understanding of their values and philosophy, but we will go through four of the most interesting ones today. These are Havamal, Vafbrunismal, Skirnismal, and Harbarsho. In Havamal, they talk about important wisdom to remember. Cattle die, friends die, and the same with you. But I know of something that never dies, and that's a dead person's deeds. This highlights that the highest value of a person is his actions, being honorable and showing courage. They talk about faithless women and how Odin seduces maidens. He was in fact not maidenless. They continue with stories about morals, ethics and correct action. I know that I hung on a windy tree nine long nights, wounded with a spear dedicated to Odin, myself to myself, on that tree of which no man knows where its roots run. No bread did they give me, nor a drink from a horn. Downwards I peered, I took up the runes, Screaming, I took them. Then, I fell back from there. The windy tree from which the victim hangs is often identified with the world tree Yggdrasil by commentators. This scene is a sacrifice of himself. The hanging and spear injury is often compared to the crucifixion of Christ. Even though at this time, Norse paganism and Christianity had no contact, they still had ideas about self-sacrifice being one of the most noble things to do. We continue with the Codex of Vafbrunismol, where we can find the writings. You alone know that, what long ago, you said in the ears of your son, I doomed myself when I dared to tell what fate will befall the gods, and staked my wit against the wit of Odin, ever the wisest of all. This emphasizes to never cross Odin, the wisest of all, and provokes a sense of God-fearing, listening to every word the gods has to say. In Skirnismal, the god Frey is completely infatuated by a maiden giant known as Gerd. His friend, Skirnir, asks him why he is sad. Freyr responds that he cannot contact this woman on his own, and needs Skirnir's help to woo her, essentially being his wingman. He is given a magical steed and sword, going into the hall of the giants. He first tries to bribe Gerd with gifts, but these are quickly refused. But Skirnir, thinking quickly on his feet, successfully woos Gerd and sets up a meeting point for her and Freyr. Skirnir returns to Asgard and reports to Freyr, who asks him, Tell me, Skirnir, before unsaddling or stepping forth, another pace. It's the news you bring from Jotunheim, for better or for worse. Skirner replies, In the woods of Bari, which we both know so well, a quiet, still, and tranquil place, in nine nights time to Njord's son, will Gerd give herself? Freya responds, One night is long enough, yet longer still are two. How then shall I contend with three, for months have passed more quickly than half a bridal eve? This tells us that even the gods had a wingman, and even more than so, paints a very human picture of the gods being in love and not being able to wait for their loved one. Another version of this story shows us that Skirner has to threaten Gerd with several curses. These are, she will be invisible, but also a public spectacle, which means a lot of people will see her, but not as a human, as just entertainment. She will have a physically repulsive husband, highlighting that the old Norse people really cared about the looks, and this being one of the worst fates a woman could experience. 
experience. She will experience male authoritarian disapproval, her dad disapproving of her. This talks about the still patriarchal society the old Norse people had, that you should seek the approval of your father and not disappoint him in any way. In the story of Habarsha, Thor comes back from a journey and meets a ferryman, Greybeard, who controls the boats Thor needs to take across the river, but Greybeard doesn't let him. They get into a verbal conflict. He tells Thor that he dresses poorly in beggar's clothes and that Thor's wife is cheating on him, calling him unmanly. Thor throws back that he defeated several giants and talks about all the maidens he acquired, but Greybeard still refuses to take him on board. Interpretations of this story vary, but it puts emphasis on that infidelity is heavily frowned upon, dressing properly is a sign of virtue, and the importance of masculinity. However, the most important story still remains, how Odin lost his eye to acquire infinite wisdom and clarity, showing that these are important virtues for the Old Norse people. If you can only take away one thing from these stories, it's that they loved their gods, they did everything for them. According to their gods, warriors who died in battle would journey to Valhalla in the afterlife, where they would engage in feasting and fighting until the end of the world. This is one of the reasons why they were so efficient at raiding and pillaging, destroying everything in their wake, because they were truly not afraid to die. They knew they'd be rewarded. Another reason was the concept, going berserk. This was a ritual they did before a fight. Scholars don't agree exactly what they did. Some say they ate magic mushrooms, some say they drank heavy amounts of beer, and the most brutal of them all being they drank bear blood. We probably never know which one for sure, but they all sound like you would truly go berserk after doing the ritual. The Vikings never had set rules or commandments like the Abrahamic religions we have today. Instead, they valued personal responsibility and personal growth, and most important, the need to uphold honor, show courage, hospitality, and wisdom. To uphold these values, they had rituals like Blot, a ritual where offerings are made to the gods and goddesses. The offerings can be food, drink, or other items that are symbolic of the gods' areas of influence. The ritual often involves reciting prayers or poetry, and can be performed at home or in a group setting. Sumbo is a communal drinking ritual where participants share mead or other alcoholic beverages and make toasts to the gods and ancestors. The ritual can be used for celebration, healing, or meditation. Seder is a form of magic that Norse pagans practiced. It involves connecting with the spirits of the land, ancestors, and gods to gain knowledge, guidance, and healing. The Vikings lived their lives by going out to war, of course, but this wasn't as often as portrayed in history. They were actually primarily traders. Our lives were more similar than we would think. They cared for their loved ones, they grieved, they celebrated, going through life together. Although their lifestyle was somewhat similar to ours, the Vikings also lived in completely different ways, reading and telling stories to each other about the gods and goddesses. They were in tune with nature, they said everything is connected, the plants, the animals, the soil. Often performing their practices, like Blot and Sumbel, being the most important of them, like going to church on Sunday, it was also important for them to celebrate every season, including the cold, harsh winter. They studied runes to read even more about the gods and learn from the stories, exploring the magical practice of Seder, guided by the gods, even having a shrine or altar where they honored the gods. Norse paganism religion started declining with the rise of Christianity in Scandinavia. However, there has been a resurgence of the religion in recent years. The religion is even classified as real in Iceland. While the number of practitioners is small compared to other mainstream religions, the popularity of Norse paganism has been steadily increasing in recent years. Many individuals are drawn to Norse paganism due to its connection to nature and the focus on personal experience and exploration. Religion also offers a sense of community and a way to connect with ancestral roots. The Vikings, often depicted as mindless warriors and raiders, were far more complex and culturally rich than popular stereotypes suggest. Beyond their warrior ethos, they held a deep belief in a pantheon of gods and goddesses, forging a spiritual connection with the natural world. The concept of Valhalla and the practice of going berserk underscored their fearlessness in the face of death, driving their efficient raiding and pillaging. Yet, beyond their warrior culture, the Vikings embraced personal responsibility, growth, and the principles of honor, courage, hospitality, and wisdom. Their rituals like Blot and Sumbel, and their exploration of Seder magic, provided a deeper connection to their gods and ancestors. 
as Norse paganism experiences a resurgence in the modern world, it reminds us that the lessons and values of these ancient warriors can still hold meaning and relevance in our lives today.